So, yeah, so actually, you know, this is the same uh, drawing that I showed you in the previous, you know, talk. So, the basic, you know, the structure of, you know, conventional the height detectors. So, so, as I told you, you know, the conventional, in the conventional pet detector, you know, we use you know, this kind of the photomultiplier tube. So, the photomultiplier tube is a kind of, you know, vacuum tube in which the, the how to say, you know, the visible light photon, the light photon is, visible light photon is, you know, the collected by the, you know, the photocathode or with photomultiplier tube, and in the you know the photocathode of in a photomultiplier tube, this you know, the visible photon is converted into you know, electron, and actually you know, the amount of you know this, uh, these electrons are amplified uh, within the within this you know, photomultiplier tube by the, you know, the the high voltage difference between the you know, anode and the cathode. Uh, so as I told you, you know that uh, mostly we use you know this kind of you know the block detector, in which you know the multiple the scintillation crystals. I mean that the, the scintillation crystal array that are coupled with you know four photomultiplier tubes, and you know by comparing the output signal of you know these you know photomultiplier tubes, so we can determine the where the you know. Gamma-ray uh, gamma was impacted you know, within the, the scintillation crystals. Okay. So, yeah, actually we have used you know, this kind of you know, the PET block detector for more than 12, 20 what, the 30, the 30 you know, the years, you know, something like that. Uh, so th that is you know, the very stable you know, technology mm -hmm. and you know, the, the very well proven you know, the technology for but the, the, there actually this kind of you know photomultiplier tube based you know, PET detectors has you know, the several disadvantages. So this is you know, the another you know, type of you know, PET detectors. I mean the, the quadratic sharing PET detectors. Uh, so you know the light, the, <coughs> it, the, light, you know, the picture shows the, the you know the top view of those you know the quadratic sharing of PET detectors, and this is the you know, side of view. So, so you know that if we look at this in you know, a top view, you know, so there are you know, the large gap you know between the photomultiplier tube. So because of these gaps, you know, so usually we lose you know some amount of you know the scintillation light photon the emitted by the scintillation crystals. And you know, in the block detectors, you know, usually you know we use you know light guide between the you know scintillation crystal and the photomultiplier tube. So we also lose you know some of the you know the photons uh, within you know this uh, light guide as well. So actually, you know, the losing the the scintillation photons, you know, because of losing the you know scintillation photons, you know, cause the the degradation. In the you know, intrinsic special resolution of the PET detector, and the, you know, the it also lead to the you know, the degradation of you know, the energy resolution of PET detectors. Actually, you know, this is a real disadvantage of you know, four multiplier based you know, PET detectors. Uh, so on the other hand, you know, the silicon PN, silicon four multiplier. Is uh, you know the photo is, This is also the photo sensor that can you know uh, <coughs> say. Uh, so using this sensor, we can also you know collect you know light photon emitted from the scintillation you know, crystal. Uh, but this guy you know is based on the the semiconductor technology. The exactly you know this is based on the CMOS technology. So because so. Yeah, so so that is why you know that uh, so we can make you know, very compact the photo sensors that is much much smaller than you know photo multiplier tubes. So because you know they are so they have you know such a you know the compact size, so we can make this kind of you know, array. So without you know the large gap between you know, these photo sensors, okay. 
<clears throat> yeah, so yeah, because of such a compact means, you know, that we can also you know, the, develop this kind of you know, very small, very compact, you know, the, the pep block detectors or something like that. So actually, you know that, that uh, so this is a picture from the you know GMS scale. Actually, you know this left one is you know the conventional the photo multiplier tube based you know pep block detector, and you know this is the you know their new the silicon PM based you know the PET. So I think that you can appreciate you know the how compact the uh, it uh, is you know new you know silicon PM based you know. Pet detectors. So we can also realize that the, the line loss, you know, between the you know, scintillation crystal and a photo sensors would be you know, the much smaller, yeah, maybe the smaller. So in this near the silicon pen, you know, based pet detector. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another advantage of you know the compactness is the. The, the improvement of you know, the integer resolution of you know, PET detector, as I told you. So this is you know, so this is you know one of you know, such examples. So actually in my lab, you know, so we have developed you know, this you know, silicon PM based and uh, comparable uh, PET detector for the small animal imaging. Uh, so so in this development, you know. The eight by eight, you know, LIS of crystal that has the you know picture of you know one point to twenty eight millimeter, the quite small, you know, very small, the scintillation crystal for small animal image, and this you know the crystal array was coupled with you know four by four the silicon PMs. So, yeah, because you know the, the because the silicon PM has you know quite compact size, actually we can read and we can resolve this very small. So this is the you know the crystal map that we acquired using this coupling between the very small scintillation crystal and the you know, silicon PM array, and we can see that the all of you know the nine by nine the scintillation crystals are very well resolved in this very small uh, detector movements. So you know, so that was why you know that we could make you know very high spatial resolution the small animal in you know, the pet system with you know very the high spatial resolution. So actually, you know that there, so this is you know radio tracer that is accumulated in the lip node of you know, the mouse. So I think that you can imagine how small the you know the lip node of the mouse here. So actually, you know that this very the small animal pet with you know, high spatial resolution could you know, very well resolve and you know, could you know, well you know, localize the activity you know, the, the, from the you know, node of the mouse. Okay. Uh, and as I told you, you know that the, the because you know we can make very you know the compact you know the the pet detector module without you know, very small loss of you know, interest. <coughs> Actually, you know that we can also improve the timing resolution and you know the energy resolution of you know, the pet systems you know based on the silicon PM technology. So uh, this is a uh, one of you know, such example so in which you know that we coupled you know the three by three by you know, twenty millimeter the LIS of crystal to the you know, the silicon PM, and we measured you know the timing and you know energy resolution the without use of you know preamplifier. <coughs> Usually, you know that we we need you know preamplifier to you know the increase in you know, size of you know electrical signal the coming from the you know the photo sensors. But uh, actually, you know that in this experience, you know that the uh, experiment, you know that uh, we didn't use you know preamplifier. To reduce the you know the amount of you know, electrons that should be used in the pet detectors, but there yeah because of you know the you know good you know coupling light coupling between the, the crystal and the silicon PM and you know <coughs> the, uh, recent advances in the silicon PM technology 
actually we could get you know, about 200 picosecond time in resolution with you know, this very practical the size of you know, the LSS, LIS, or the scintillation crystal. Okay. <clears throat> and the energy resolution was also quite, uh, quite excellent. I mean, that uh, usually you know, that the, the, the energy resolution less than 10% you know, is very great value. So, but you know, we could you know, achieve you know, about you know, seven percent you know the energy resolution. So, based on you know, this LIS and coupled you know, to the energy. <coughs> so, do you have any question the, regarding the silicon PN, the head detectors so far? No? Yeah, if we. There is no question. Let me you know, move to the next topic. Yeah. So as I told you, you know that the, so in SNEO, so we have focused on the the silicon PM, you know, the the pet uh, development. So actually, you know, we have actually particular, you know, that the, we had the interest in the you know the development of you know, MI comparable the pet system, the silicon PM pet system. So yeah, actually, you know that the in the you know uh, how to say you know so first you know that the, we show the you know the MI, MI comparability of you know the silicon PM you know the PET detectors uh, in this you know the publications uh, and you know that the, we developed you know first you know the prototype the animal you know the PET system based on the you know, silicon PM. And we have also shown that uh, the, we can use in you know, a silicon PM pad the systems you know for simultaneous you know the PET MR studies. So based on the three Tesla the clinical MRI as you can see here. And you know recently you know that there are, so we have also developed in a very compact system, very compact in you know, the silicon PM based in you know, a PET insert system that was you know combined with you know, the seven Tesla in you know, an animal dedicated MRIs. <coughs> yeah, so yeah, so this slide is showing you know that the, how you know <coughs> good, the special resolution of you know, this you know, silicon PM based you know, systems. Actually, you know that the, so this is the you know the Hawkins phantom. You know, the measured by the you know our uh, silicon PM pad <coughs> for you know, second test MR. Actually, you know that the, when we use you know the point spread function based you know resolution recovery construction, actually you know we could easily you know resolve you know, one millimeter the the hard lad here, and you know that we can also see the, the, the smaller you know lad with you know, point you know, seven five millimeter. And actually, you know that there, so these are the, the images of you know, the heart of the mouth without applying the you know, EKG you know, gate. So, but the, you know, because of you know, high spatial resolution of this scanner, you know, we could you know, reserve the, the myocardium between myocardium from the, you know, the, the left ventricle. <coughs> Uh, and we have also, you know, commercialized in you know, this system. Actually, you know, that uh, we made in you know, a kind of you know spin-off company, uh, the Brightonics Imaging from the, you know, the Seoul National University. And now, you know, that uh, we uh, the produce in you know, this in you know, the silicon PM based uh, the head insert, you know, that can be you know, combined with you know, the small animal dedicated you know, MRI. <coughs> uh, yeah, actually, you know that uh, now you know the bright tonics imaging is working with you know, aspect imaging. So that is you know Israeli company uh, that provide you know the permanent magnet based in you know, the one Tesla the MRI. So this you know the M7 scanner is you know the aspect you know the, the one Tesla you know, permanent magnet based MRI and. The right tonic you know, the silicon PMP insert is combined with you know, this uh, one test plan, a common magnet based MRI here. So, for the you know, simultaneous imaging, actually, uh, let me see what this is. Okay. Yeah, so this is. 
So kill time is not installed in this yeah, by the way, you know that uh, the pad insert in uh, the enter <coughs> into the you know, MRI from the you know, left side, and MRI coil is inserted from the right side, and they meet together at the center of you know, the MR magnet, and we can you know, fire you know, simultaneously at the MR images. <coughs> uh, actually, one of you know, the these systems you know, that has a recentry you know, installed in the NCI and the uh, OB, uh, the NIH, as you can see here. Uh, now let me show you, you know, some of the, the examples of you know, simultaneous you know, PEDMR imaging and uh, the photo, you know, the small animal, the tracer you know, development you know, researches. So actually, you know, the, the, we, we, actually we have you know, collaborated with Professor Yun Sang Lee. Uh, to do you know, this kind of you know, studies. Actually, you know, the Professor Lee Su Guru you know, has developed many the ion oxide based, you know, ion oxide and nanoparticle based you know, multimodal the imaging proof. For example, you know, that, uh, so actually, uh, this proof, actually, this is the, you know, the copper 60 labeled you know, encapsulated you know, ion oxide nanoparticle for the you know, dual modality you know, HDMI imaging. So yeah, so these are the you know MRI images and these are the you know the fusion images of you know right? And so you know yeah, actually you know that uh, if you compare the you know the pre-injection and one hour and the four hour you know the post-injection data, you can see that the signal of you know the liver you know, get dark because you know that the, the the, this you know, ion oxide nanoparticle was captured by the focus cell in the liver. And you can also see that in the same region, the, the actual pet activity was also increased uh, because of the you know, same mechanism and you know, that, uh, the, because of the, you know, the radioactivity from the you know, 64. Okay. <coughs> And you know the Professor Yun Sang is you know the guru that has also labeled you know the folate to the you know this you know top of six point you know, ion oxide nanoparticle for you know, targeting the you know the KB in you know, tumor models. So so if we look at the, you know the MR images, you know you can see the signal change. I mean the, the intensity you know T2 in you know, a signal decrease in the you know the KB in you know, a tumor model. Because of the you know, this you know, ion oxide nanoparticle, particle, and you can see that the simultaneously acquired you know, the pet activity is also you know, localized in the same region as you can see in this you know, pet images and in this you know, fusion images of you know, the pet. Okay. <coughs> uh, yeah, actually, you know that, that this kind of you know, the correlation study is quite limited in the conventional the sequential you know, PET-CT studies because you know sometimes you know there is some movement between the you know, the PET and you know, CT scan uh, of the, you know, the animal. So, so because it is hard to you know the control the kind of you know, movement between the PET and CT scan, sometimes you know that we cannot exactly you know, correlate you know, this kind of you know, Activities, but the, in the simultaneous PEDMR study, because we acquired the data you know, simultaneously, so we can exactly say actually this signal was originated in the same the region. Okay. <coughs> this is in uh, the the, the <coughs> another in you know, such an example. So you know the props actually you know depending on the. The size of the nanoparticle actually it has you know, the different you know, distribution uh, the characteristics, the, the different biodistribution. So, for example, you know that uh, if we make you know very small nanoparticle, for example, you know five nanometer core size, actually we can do this kind of you know the, the blood of the image. So, Professor Yun Sang Lee. This group has also you know the labeled in a proper 60.2 this you know five nanometer you know ion oxide nanoparticle. 
then so we can see the you know, the increase of in you know, T1 signal the in the you know, the, 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 the abdominal the out the outer of the mouth due to you know, this uh, iron oxide nano particle and you know in the same region we can also localize you know the head activity very you know that is you know very well matched with you know, this signal intensity of the okay. Uh, and as I told you, you know, the, the, now we are working on the, you know, the, the, uh, the human scan. I mean, the, the you know, seven Tesla, you know, am I comparable, you know, the brain PET scan. So actually in Korea, you know, that we have, you know, two, you know, seven Tesla, you know, the, the clinical uh, scale, you know, the, the MRI systems. So we are collaborating with, you know, the one of them. They are you know, very expert in the same test uh -huh. and we work, and we are you know the working on this kind of you know brain dedicated brain size you know the systems. But uh, you know that uh, actually you know, that in this development you know we had you know some challenges in terms of you know the space and you know in terms of you know the power consumption. So that was why you know that uh, so we have developed you know. New, you know, time-based, you know, digitization method that need, you know, very small amount of, you know, the front-end electronics and, you know, some the electronics for the, the analog to, you know, digital component or something like that. Uh, let me skip the, you know, the detail of, you know, this technology. So we have, you know, complicated, you know, development of, you know, first prototype, and we are now working on the. You know, the second prototype. Uh, actually, this you know two prototypes you know has you know different you know, <coughs> diameter in the, the axial length. Actually, you know the, the, our the first prototype has you know about twenty five centimeter in diameter and the twenty six you know millimeter small, very very you know short you know the axial length. Uh, but in the in our you know second prototype development you know. We are now working on the you know, systems with uh, 33 centimeter you know, diameter for the, the brain, human brain, and you know the, the actual length of you know uh, that is you know, longer than 20 centimeter or something. Okay, but today you know that let me show you know some of the images that we have acquired using uh, the first prototype system. So as I told you, you know that there, actually this system has you know limited size in terms of diameter. And actual lengths, actual lengths. Uh, but uh, you know that uh, it has in you know, the sufficient you know the large diameter for the human brain. You know, the uh, so we you know have made you know dual layer you know depth of infection the detector for you know, this project. <laughs> so by coupling the you know. Two different, you know, the scintillation crystal arrays. I mean that the, the in the you know upper, you know part, you know that we use in you know, a thirteen by thirteen, one point eighty six millimeter, you know, the scintillation crystals, the LSO scintillation crystals, and in you know, the lower layer, you know, we use in you know, a fourteen by fourteen, the you know, scintillation crystal array with you know, same crystal you know, size. Actually, you know that if we use you know this kind of you know dual layer the scintillation crystal, so we can measure the you know, depth of intuition the inside of you know scintillation crystal array. So that the measurement of you know depth of you know the intuition is by useful for the improving the the spatial resolution uniformity uh, in the PET images. Uh, and you know this crystal was you know coupled with you know eight by eight uh, silicon pen array. So based on the similar technology that we have used in the, the small animal. Okay. So this is in a crystal map that was you know led by the you know the silicon pen. So so actually this crystal map. In this crystal map, you know that you can see the you know these you know red dots and you know, blue dots. Actually, you know that uh, this red dot 
is uh, are further in uh, the upper crystal layers that was in uh, the 13 by 13 uh, crystal array, and you know this blue dots fall in uh, the lower crystal array with uh, 14 by uh, 14 uh, sun. So you can see here that uh, you know based on the you know this crystal map, so we can resolve the you know the position of you know each crystal, and we can also you know the decode you know the the the, the layer of you know the gamma orientation. So, you know, I mean the, the depth of orientation. So we can uh, realize you know the in which layer you know the gamma ray was you know detected in this the detector. <clears throat> yeah, it yielded in a quite good in a, the energy resolution and the constants in the resolving time as well. I mean that you know the energy resolution was about you know ten to about you know eleven percent, both in the you know, upper and in the lower layers. And the constant time and resolution that we could have obtain was about less than you know thirty hundred three hundred and you know, fifteen you know, per second. You know, both in the upper and the lower layers. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, you know that uh, you know to achieve you know good uh, time and resolution with you know small size in you know, a scintillation crystal is you know much more difficult than you know with the you know large crystal size. So that is why you know that the time and resolution that we could obtain here was you know the worse than you know. The time resolution that we could obtain with in a larger crystal, three by three by twenty or something like that. But still, you know that I think that this is quite a good number for the brain dedicated in you know, the health systems. Okay. Yeah, because we use in you know, a about in you know, a one point eight millimeter in you know, crystals, actually we can obtain you know quite good you know special resolution. You know, that is you know, between the one and you know, two millimeter years at the center of you know, the field of view. And you know, but the you know, sensitivity was you know, quite low <coughs> because of the actual we, in the first system you know, that we have in you know, the actual field of view. Uh, and this is a comparison study you know, between the, the brain dedicated to CAT and you know, the whole body. The PET-CT that we now use uh, in my hospital. So, yeah, because, yeah, actually, you know that they are different in terms of you know crystal size. Yeah, you know that uh, we use in a one point in a about one point nine millimeter scintillation crystal, but uh, you know in the clinical current you know clinical whole body systems we use in you know, a four millimeter. The scintillation crystal size, so that is about you know, twice larger than the, our development. So that so so this is why you know that uh, we could achieve in a much better you know spatial resolution uh, with you know this you know the prototype brain dedicated systems. Okay. So this is the comparison you know of you know uh, of my you know, brain factor. So. Actually, you know, this is uh, you know CT image of you know Hoffman brain factor, and you can see that uh, you know the, the our PET images has you know high good you know special resolution, and we can so resolve in a very detailed structure of you know the Hoffman brain factor as you can see in the CT. Image. So yeah, actually, you know that here you know the both of you know. The brain pet data and the you know, whole body pet data was were you know reconstructed without applying the you know the point spread function you know, for the you know the comparison of the purpose. So yeah, so you can see that uh, you know without you know applying the point spread function, you know whole body pet has you know much lower the special visual power. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know that we can improve the, you know, the resolution <coughs> of the whole body system as well if we apply you know, the point spread function based in you know, the resolution recovery, the image reconstruction. But uh, if we, but actually, you know, this kind of you know, the point spread function based in you know, resolution recovery reconstruction yield you know, so some 
you know, the artifact as you can see so in these regions. So, yeah, because, you know, this kind of, you know, reconstruction algorithm uh, is a kind of, you know, the conversion method. Actually, you know, those, you know, the conversion method usually calls for this kind of, you know, gives the artifact to what the, the, the link artifact. So this is why, you know, that the, the in the brain pad the studies usually we don't the recommend the use of this kind of, you know, the convolution based, you know, point spread function construction languages. Yeah, but, you know, that the, in the brain dedicated pad, because it has, you know, quite good uh, spatial resolution, actually we don't need to apply this kind of, you know, construction algorithm that cause in our okay. <clears throat> so let me now move to the you know time of flight in a related you know, technology. Yeah so yeah the reason why you know that the, in our you know brain pad development you know we try to you know we have worked in a on the you know, implementing you know, time resolution, I mean, the, the 300 you know, something, the peak per second to, or something like that, was that, you know, we can get, you know, better, you know, the image quality you know, based on the you know, time of flight you know, technology. So, so this is, you know, I think, you know, so you are, I think you are the formula with the benefit of you know, time of flight time. For the you know, those reduction, so I mean that uh, so if we uh, look at you know if we compare you know these images you know the left one is the 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 non time of flight pad with you know all you know the collected count for you know some times and actually you know that the, the right right one is the you know, time of flight pad with about you know one third of the counts you know all you know these selected images. So, yeah, although you know that we we utilize you know much lower number of you know the number of counts, you know we could achieve in you know, a similar quality of you know the image because of the you know, type of fighting you know, conditions. Okay? And another you know very the interesting benefit that we can achieve you know based on the time of flight. So was the you know is the you know simultaneous you know the activity and the you know, attenuation map reconstruction as I you know, introduced you know, the yesterday. I mean that the, uh, so based on the you know, time of flight you know, the information, actually only from the you know, emission pad data. So without CT or the, without any transmission data, actually we can you know, reconstruct you know, this you know, attenuation map and the you know, activity data. So actually, you know, they are from the <coughs> the real clinical studies with you know, the our you know the clinical PET scanner. You know, I mean the, the PET scanner with you know the five hundred you know fifty picosecond you know, time resolution. Yeah. By the way, you know that the, so we can see that you know so these you know the attenuation map show the you know the, the distribution of you know, attention coefficient and you know that uh, this activity the data are also quite similar to the you know the OSM based you know the gold standard you know, I mean the, the city the corrected for you know attenuation using the you know, city based operation. Yeah but uh, but actually you know that the, so if we have you know much much better you know time resolution for example, you know, if we can have you know, 10 picosecond time resolution or something like that, very either values, then you know, we can much more improve the quality of you know, this simultaneously, the reconstructed you know, the attenuation and the activity data. But the, the with you know, the current you know, values, I mean that the, with you know, 500 you know, picosecond time resolution or something like that, the quality of you know, attenuation mass is you know, quite poor you know, in comparison to the you know, city based attenuation mass. And we can see you know, some of the artifacts, some artifact in, uh, here, a kind of you know, cross artifact between the you know, attenuation and you know, activity, particularly you know, in the regions with you know, 
the hot activity you know, in the you know, activity times. So, so this is why you know that currently this kind of you know, algorithm is now used in the clinical you know, as scanners. Although it is this is quite promising. Also. So, so we have, but you know we have had interest in how to you know utilize you know this kind of data. So, so recently you know that in my lab you know we have worked on the improvement of you know this simultaneously reconstructed you know attenuation map with the activity. So using the the machine learning technology. So I mean that uh, so we have designed a kind of you know the convolution neural network, convolutional you know, neural network for deep learning. And we train you know this convolutional the neural network the, with the, the city-based attenuation map as a reference to all the you know network and you know the simultaneously constructed activity and attenuation map as an input to the you know, this you know, deep learning networks. So, so this network so was you know, supposed to you know, the train based on this input function, the input data and the reference data from the, you know, the city-based attenuation map to yield you know, this kind of you know, the attenuation map. So that was you know, the originated from the, this data. So, yeah, so if you can see here, you know, the simultaneous reconstruction and, you know, deep learning network based uh, the attenuation map for the, in the head region, you know, region, you know, has, you know, quite similar you know, distribution of the <coughs> attenuation coefficient as, you know, the CT based you know, the attenuation map. Okay. So, yeah, actually, you know, their performance is dependent on the the, the, the position of the, you know, the brain, the position of the brain. And actually, you know, that there, so this is a simultaneously constructed attention map, and this is the, you know, seat-based, you know, the gold standard attention map. And these three are the output of, you know, outcome of the, you know, the team neural networks with, you know, different structures. And that the conversion of encoder and unit in a hybrid network. So they look you know, quite similar. And yeah, actually, you know, the, the, some of them work you know, quite well for you know, the generating the you know, attenuation map, as you can see here. But the, it has you know, some you know, lower performance <coughs> uh, in the lower part of the you know, head. But I think you know, this is. You know, the sufficient removal for the, you know, the alternative correction purpose for the, you know, the test studies. Okay. And how about the, you know our whole body the data? So yeah, so it was our curiosity you know, whether this kind of you know, simultaneous reconstruction and deep learning based you know attention generation will work for the you know, whole body data as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is because you know that the brain has the you know, brain has you know quite simple structures. I am the attenuation man in that attenuation man. So you know that the soft tissue and water are just you know surrounded by the you know, the thick you know the skull. But the, the situation is different for you know our you know, torso data. Yeah, we have you know much more you know, complex you know <coughs> distribution of the tissue and the, you know, the <coughs> structures structures. So by the way, you know that uh, we have designed in you know, another you know, network unit based in you know, a convolutional neural network, and we do a kind of you know, patch based in you know, learning for generating the, you know, the attenuation map based on the simultaneous you know, construction. Okay. Uh, this is in you know, the one of such example. Uh, so yeah, actually, you know that the simultaneous reconstruction works. You know, interestingly, it works well as well for the you know, whole body data. So you know that this is the simultaneous reconstructed in activity and the attenuation map only from the image you know, data, only from image of the data. So without CT or without you know, transmission, and uh, this is a gold standard in you know, a CT-based attenuation map. And 
these you know two images are the uh, output of you know convolutional the neural network. I mean that uh, so this left one is you know the output of you know convolutional uh, CNN outcome of you know CNN you know when we just use you know this alternation map as an input of you know, CNN and this is the output of you know, CNN when we use you know both of you know, this activity and the alternation map. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so if we compare you know original the simultaneously reconstructed you know, alternation map with you know, CNN outcome, so we can see this device has in you know, a much lower in you know, noise level. Lower noise level. And you know that uh, it show in you know, a much better uh, the bone structures than the, the original you know, alternation map, and you can see that the each intensity is much more you know, accurate than you know, these guys. And another very interesting you know the, the fact that actually the activity data was <coughs> also useful for improving the contrast in you know, the, between the, the soft tissue. So I mean these you know, alternation maps. Okay. So this is another example. So you know, so these two guys are you know, activity and the alternation map you know, constructed only from the initial data. And this is city based, you know, the old standard you know, the alternation map. And these two are the output of you know, the CNN based you know, the denoising and the, you know, the reduction of the you know, positive artifact, something like that in the simultaneous reconstruction. Okay. Uh, then how the, how accurate you know this kind of in you know, the approach? So yeah, so this is you know the difference and you know absolute difference and you know percent difference map between the you know the simultaneous reconstruction and you know CT based you know old standard simulation. So you know as you can see the original the simultaneous reconstruction yielded you know very large error. Our body everywhere, almost everywhere. But the uh, deep learning based in uh, the improvement of you know, alternation map could reduce in a lot of you know the errors. But except for the you know, the long and particularly you know, the surface of long and you know, the door you know, river like that. But I think that you know this error. The the you know how to say you know, but I think that the, the main reason you know why we can see the, this large error in this region is the, the limitation of city based alternation. So as you know that the, the city based alternation correction it has the issue of you know the mismatch between the attenuation, I mean the transmission and the emission data. I mean that because we cannot simultaneously acquire the CT and PET data, sometimes you know there is mismatch between the CT and PET data. So those kind of you know, the movement, you know, I mean that particularly in this case, you know, the respiratory you know, motion you know, caused the you know, mismatch between the you know, PET and CT. So sometimes you know that may be you know, some artifact in these regions. So but you know that because our data was generated only based on the emission head data, actually it is free from that, those kind of you know, mismatch items. So I think this is a kind of you know, evidence that you know, our the simultaneous image reconstruction and deep learning based you know, the quality improvement would be you know, better than current in the city based. You know. And you know, so I think you know this, yeah, uh, would be you know, quite promising for you know the better you know alternation correction for this kind of you know to reduce this kind of artifact, and if we can you know the improve the, you know the resolution and you know contrast with the, this kind of map, I think you know someday you know we can generate you know this in you know, a CT data only from the image. Without using a real CT, because you know we can obtain this kind of you know, information. So I expect that in the maybe in the future, 
So <coughs> you may not need you know, the X-ray CT for the you know, passages uh, data position. So maybe we're going to have you know, a system with a CT or something. Maybe 100 you know, years of data or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, you know, quite you know, the possible it's just not 100 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four or nine hours. So let me, you know, the summarize, you know, my the first part, you know. So as I told, yeah, so, you know, I'd like to, you know, the, just to emphasize that, you know, new photo sensor, new tech, photo sense technology has released to the, you know, the, you know, uh, lots of you know, the advances in the pet technology, pet detector technology and system technology. So, yeah, because of that, you know, we could you know, develop uh, ML comparable uh, small animal pet systems, and we could make you know, the brain dedicated pet system with a very high special resolution and you know, the deep learning based you know, the image correction you know, strategy. You know, was quite useful for the obtaining the, you know, the alternation map uh, without use of you know, the C2 or the MR1. <coughs> That's it. So any questions? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so you know this, uh, so yeah, the, do the dose that you give uh, seems to me uh, quite similar to us. But uh, you know, if we, you know, but uh, you know, we, I think that we use in a similar you know, system uh, with about 500 uh, picosecond time resolution. <coughs> but you know, the new systems that has you know the better time resolution. You know, the one of them, the one of the new systems you know, have you know. 200, you know, 12 or something like you know, picosecond, about 200 picosecond. <coughs> so with those in you know, the systems, I think we can do this in the injected activity as well. And, you know, with, you know, very dedicated system, even we can do this much more. So maybe with, you know, very dedicated system, we do time and resolution, maybe I think that we can reduce, you know, Injected activity by uh, one tenth or something like that. Regarding the <coughs> initial attribution, <coughs> so uh, can we try it here? Like, is there any way we can try it here? Um, yes, why not? Yeah, so, but uh, you know, although, yeah, actually, this is in the state of you know, just investigation, but uh, you know, only the research purpose. Yeah, actually, we can you know, try it. If you have the you know, same scanner as us, yeah. But actually, you know, we have with you know, so the Siemens, you know, the MCT scanner, Siemens MCT scanner. So yeah. So yeah. Actually, yeah, we don't have experience with you know, G and Philips data, but you know. So we can have you know, enough information from the vendors and maybe that's right. Yeah. So it's a uh, trap. We get this yeah. try and this. Right, right. Yeah. Actually, the Borana has to play. Yeah. 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 As a Felix scan. Yeah. 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 And Dundam has to play as a G. Yeah. Yeah. So your <coughs> methodology can be applied for yeah. the Borana has to play as well as here. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, but uh, you know, we need you know, some uh, information from the vendors regarding the you know, file format and 
how they apply the scale correction and modification. We also need some collaboration with the vendors. So, can you give a round of applause for these great inventions? Another question. So, uh, I have an information uh, the, about the Chinese invention. Actually, not Chinese, uh, the UC Davis invention by Simon Cherry. Actually, his competitor. They have uh, 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 informed to the, 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 the community that medical community that they have produced total body fat, which is going to reduce the injection, uh, the injection radio, uh, the radio applied amount down to <coughs> one tenth. It means that not uh, ten milligrams for whole body, one milligram. So, would you explain? Total body 